Recession fears may be subsiding as recent data point to more positive fundamentals for the economy, including a better than expected jobs report and positive developments with U.S. and China trade negotiations. Bank of America is forecasting that U.S. GDP growth in the second and third quarters may pleasantly surprise investors as well as economists. Joining us now with his reaction is Peyton and Rigel Chief Economist Jeffrey Cleveland. Jeffrey, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. So you were nodding along as I was reading the intro. You seem to be kind of on par with that forecast overall. Yeah, I think growth in the first quarter could come in above 2% at an annual rate. I mean, this is better than I, I think people had in mind at the start of the year. In real time, I think Friday's payroll report is the best way for investors to gauge the strength of the economy. We're still adding jobs at almost 200,000 per month. It's a solid rate of growth. Yeah, when you think about overall, you know, I really like that you pointed out that Jerome Powell said the Fed's one overarching goal is basically to extend this ongoing economic cycle uh, by taking more of a dovish tone. And globally, that seems to be the overall reception. But you're not actually afraid that the economy will slow down despite the Fed's pulling back. Not, not afraid that the economy is slowing down. We, you know, had some mixed data in the last couple of months. The February jobs report, I think. Yes, that really threw people for a little bit loop. of a head fake, yes. right? But we've come back nicely. The first quarter was a great quarter, and I think we'll see that in the GDP. But the Fed has already pivoted rather dramatically. And, you know, when I, when I was in school, the, the central bank was supposed to do price stability. Right. The, what he, uh, Jerome Powell said very clearly was the Fed's goal right now is to extend this cycle. So they're going to get out of the way and let things run. I, I think so easy monetary policy plus a, an economy that's growing at still a pretty good clip. This is a great backdrop for markets. You know, one thing that I do have to push back a little bit is when you look at the global picture, you seem to have a, a bit more of an optimistic sentiment than I would say a lot of the strategists and economists that we're talking to uh, who specifically cite Europe and China. And even when you look at these individual companies in the S&P coming out saying, hey, these headwinds are real and we are losing a lot of customer traction, uh, macro effects will really impact our bottom line going forward. What makes you so optimistic that perhaps the European, the Eurozone, as well as the Chinese economy are actually on the mend and we may not be uh, seeing a recession anytime soon. I think two things. Where is the most pessimism aimed? And I think Europe right now is right. the candidate for that. So whether you're talking about European equities, uh, Brexit, Brexit <laughs> you, there's, a, there's reasons to be concerned. But the problem for investors is in real time, we have to make it. We have to make a case based off the data that we're seeing. And we're actually seeing a, a turn in the, in the global backdrop. So global manufacturing surveys have picked up, whether it's China or the overall uh, global index that's bottom the last two months. So I think we might be on the cusp of a, of a turnaround here. In Europe, if you look last week at the European PMIs, on the services side, yep. you saw improvement. So if you want to paint a negative picture, you point to manufacturing, you point to trade, but we think it's the, the picture is a little more complicated than that in Europe. Things aren't as bad, but what's priced in is a very bad outcome. Mm. I think into equities and also into the, bond, the government bond market. When I look at, say, last week, German boom yields, 10-year German boom yields at you know, minus six, minus eight basis points. To me, this is pricing in a, a much more dire economic scenario than I think is justified by the data. That's interesting. Speaking of the Bund and even here, that inverted yield curve that yeah. seems to be at the tip of everyone's tongue. Uh, when you think about that being a, perhaps a precursor to a recession, when you th is that something that you're, you're thinking about? How do you talk to your clients about it um, as you try to educate them overall about, hey, it, uh, you know, slow down a little bit. That's not necessarily <laughs> a surefire guarantee. Investors want a signal, a single signal that's going to give them all the answers to, say, asset allocation. Correct. And the yield curve has been popular, I think, because it has one false positive in the post-war era, the three-month and 10-year yield curve. So it's been a good barometer. So what we tell clients is you, yes, respect it, but you have to take it with a grain of salt. Mm. Once you have inversion, you need a sustained inversion. It can't just be one week or a couple of days that right. we've seen. You need a month, a quarter. Even then, once it's sustained, it can be long lags to the actual start of the recession. So last cycle, uh, we had more than 18 months between the first inversion and the start of the recession. So it can be a long time. And in that interim period, you can have good performance in equities in fixed income sectors, credit sectors like investment grade corporates and, and high yield even. Yeah. So it's not this sort of definitive light switch 
or you know, sort of signal Guarantee. exactly yeah. that, that investors want. Though. You know, I really appreciate your positivity on this set, <laughs> but when you think about the potential headwinds that, that lay ahead, what is the number one thing that you think is the looming fear or the perhaps a black swan situation? Well, you know, actually, I think the Fed has moved to this very dovish position and is it looked like they're you know, aiming at staying there. Growth is going to recover, as already recovered for the U.S. I think global growth will pick up. Mm. Okay, suddenly you have this situation where things are much better than, than I think policymakers anticipated at the start of the year and many investors. So does that mean the Fed comes back into play right. at some point later in the year? And that's where it could get uh, turbulent for equities, for spread sectors in the bond market, because the Fed is completely priced out right now. Fed funds futures market is pricing rate cuts. Yep. So if sometime later in this year, the Fed says, oh, no, 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 we, uh, we always intended on doing you know, one more rate hike. Uh, I think that could upset the, the, uh, the markets a little bit. So that, that's a risk that's sort of looming out there. But it's not a terrible risk to have. It's like, hey, we're hiking because things are good. Right. It's a best case scenario. And then you have to come up with the risks in the process. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure.